Hey everyone, Mike here with another Zombie Side Invaders painting video, and this time I'm painting the Spoiler Abomination. As you can see, there was a gap in one of the shoulders that I filled with green stuff, and I decided that I'd remove the model from the base to make it easier to paint and film. Unfortunately, the glue they used to hold this on has hardened into something stronger than adamantium, so unless you really want to do a crazy custom base, I wouldn't bother detaching the spoiler. Next I've primed the entire miniature in Korax White, and then I'm painting all of the tentacles from the hands and the neck with XV88. There are some other tentacle looking things coming from the shoulders, but I'm painting those with a different color. I'm also using this around the mouth and the neck. For all the little barnacle looking structures, which I assume are what produce the spoilers mold, I'm using a roughly 2 to 1 mix of Screamer Pink and XV88. Just mix the colors until you get something with a deep pink flesh color. I'm using this same color on the inside of the mouth and all these Tim Burton looking suckers that are all around the head. I'm still going with the same color, this time on the tubes on the forearms. And finally I'm painting the inside of all these slits on the face, two on each side and one down the middle. Next up is the main body. I wanted something fleshy but not too human looking so I went with Rakarth Flesh. Now if you want to save yourself a lot of time, you could use a contrast paint for this part. Painting and highlighting the main body was the most time consuming part of this model. I've only ever used two different contrast paints so I can't give the best advice on which would look best for the skin but I'd likely go with Skeleton Horde. Next I'm going to paint the claws and the strange crystals protruding from the body. I'm mixing roughly equal amounts of Mephiston Red and Abaddon Black to create a dark, desaturated red for the base coat. I'm putting one or two layers of this onto the three body crystals and the claws. At this point I forgot to paint the toe claws and I had to come back to them later, but if you're following this guide you might as well paint them now. There's also a bunch of tiny spikes sticking out of the arms and I'm painting these with this dark red as well. For the tentacles or feelers coming from the top of the body I'm using Cardic Flesh from P3. Next I'm going to pick out the teeth by giving each one a small dab of ivory. That's all the base colors on, I'm switching to a wash next. I didn't want anything too harsh or dark since the skin is so light, so I'm using equal parts Lamian Medium and Agrax Earthshade. This wash is going over the entire miniature. As I go I'm also doing my best to mop up any large areas of pooling. Once the wash is dry, this is a good place to stop if you're going for a decent tabletop quality. In the next part of this video, I'll be adding a few extra touches and highlights. I'm going to start off with a highlight of all the little structures on the gut. They look a bit like tiny mouths. I'm just going to do a light dry brush using two parts Midland Flesh and one part Screamer Pink. I've wiped off most of the paint from my brush and I'm just lightening up all the raised parts. Next I'm switching to a smaller detail brush and I'm using this same color to trace around the outer edges of these suckers on the end of the stalks. And I'm also using this color to highlight the tops of all the ridges in the arm tubes. Next 
Next, I'm highlighting all the ridges on the tentacles with a simple dry brush of Baylor Brown. For harder to reach places like the neck and the tentacles running down the torso, I'm switching to a size 1 brush and thinning the Baylor Brown down a bit with water. I'm just running the brush along the raised ridges, or in flat areas, I'm just making lines to give some continuity to the pattern. Then I'm just doing an edge highlight to any areas that didn't turn out as bright as I wanted with the dry brushing. Next I'm going to clean up and highlight the skin. For this I'm using equal parts Rackarth flesh and Rin flesh mixed with a bit of water. If you don't have a light flesh tone, you can go with a bit of ivory or pure white instead. My strategy for this is to paint the top two thirds of the flesh, leaving the underside darker. I'm also avoiding the deepest grooves between the muscles. I'm leaving a thin dark line of shade between any two structures as well, such as between the tentacles and the skin, or the claws in the hands. To make some areas appear brighter, such as the top of the head and the face, I used pure Rin Flesh as a second layer of highlight. Next I'm going to do the claws and the crystals sticking out of the body. I'm going to be doing three layers of dry brushing for this, starting with the darkest color, Mephiston Red. This is going to be a heavy dry brush and I'm only leaving the deepest grooves in the areas where the claw or the crystal attaches to the flesh untouched. I'm going to follow this with a gentler dry brush of Evil Sun Scarlet and I'm focusing this on the ridges and the edges on the claws and the crystals. Last will be a very light dry brush of Wild Rider Red just on the upper ridges of the claws and the crystals. For the little pink structures on the abdomen, I'm just touching each of the inner parts with a dab of Midland Flesh. This is the same color I used earlier when I mixed it into the Screamer Pink. Next I'm going to try to make these suckers stand out a little better and make them a little more gross looking by painting each one with a 1 to 1 mix of Averland Sunset and White Scar. For the feelers, I'm going back to my lighter skin tones. I'm starting off with Midland Flesh and painting the top two thirds of the feelers. I'm then following that up with Rin Flesh and painting the top one third. And it was at this point where I realized I hadn't painted the toe claws red, so I'm doing that now with my red and black mix. I want to do the eyes next, but the sockets aren't dark enough, so I'm painting the inside of these with a dark brown. Once that's dry, I'm mixing equal parts Cygnus Yellow and Moot Green and putting a dot of paint in the center of each eye. For the teeth, I'm just doing a quick retouch with the original Ivory. That's the end of the finishing touches, so I'm spraying the entire figure with a layer of matte varnish. Next I'm going to do the base, and as you can probably see, I've already played around with some ideas that I didn't like. I'm going to go with a debris field on some Martian looking soil. For this I'll be using some textured plastic card, a little bit of window screen that I had sitting around in my basement, and some pebbles. I'm cutting off a small piece of the window screen, and I've also cut a piece of the plastic card as well. For the sandy soil, I'm using brown earth texture from Vallejo. This is the same stuff I used in the workers video. Once the base is covered, I'm adding the bit of plastic card and the window screen. You don't need plastic card here by the way, any piece of old bent plastic or sprue can be painted to look like debris. I'm adding a bit more soil texture to the ends of the screen just to make sure it stays glued down, and then I'm adding the little rocks. I'm giving that a few hours to dry, and then I'm using these paints to finish off the base. The first one I'm using is a brush on primer. It doesn't matter what color this is, I just need something that my other paints are going to stick to. The rocks have a rough texture and don't need any primer. Once the primer is dry, I'm painting the plastic card and the screen with a silver metallic.
The rocks are getting painted with rough iron from Army Painter, which is a deep reddish gold color. Next, I'm using Reichland Flesh Shade on the entire base. Once that's dry, I'm going to lighten up the top of the soil with a dry brush of Zandri Dust. As an optional final step, I'm going to add a bit of rust to the metal using a few splashes of Typhus Corrosion, followed by some orange rust from Secret Weapon. All that's left is to paint the base using whatever color you prefer. Some people like color coding all the baddies on the game board, but I'm just going to go with some German Grey. And of course you'll want to spray the base and even the miniature again with some more matte varnish. And there you have it, the spoiler abomination ready to pollute your space stations and planet side habitats. Thank you very much to all my patrons for supporting the channel and thanks for all your suggestions and votes in Discord and Patreon to help decide which videos get made. Also a very special thanks to Brian Jones for sponsoring the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to use the comment section below. I respond to every question as quickly as I can. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.